Welcome back to the second race in the Golden Trail series. We're here in Chamonix in France for the Mont Blanc Marathon, and this is the most famous finish line in trail running. Chamonix is really the biggest playground around when it comes to mountain sport. Winter, summer, I mean, no matter what you like to do, you're gonna most likely find it here. But a lot of people, of course, come to see one thing, and that is His Majesty Mont Blanc. Chamonix is well known for its steep ski slopes, hosting the Winter Olympics in 1924. But for many, Chamonix is the home globally of trail running. The Mont Blanc Marathon gathers the best athletes in their discipline. So the 42 kilometer race will bring the runners all around the Valley of Chamonix with an elevation gain of 2,540 meters. This year, one thing that changed with the course is that it is doing a full loop. It's gonna end exactly where it starts in the heart of Chamonix. The other thing that changed because of that is that the last part is a steep downhill filled with switchback and that might give us a nice plot twist to our story. Now let's go take a look at the four athletes that we pick to give you a better overview of what the course is going to look like. Sara Alonso, a strong contender following her third place in the Gamma. Davide Magnini, he won Mont Blanc Marathon in 2019, second in the Gamma. He's a strong favourite. Danny Moreno, representing the USA, her first race of the season, but a strong contender for the podium. Thibaut Baronian, he's a local favourite, surely a top fiver. El año pasado, joder, después de correr no ya en Uria quería venir, pero se me hacía muy largo. No se lo veía en plan muchos kilómetros todavía. Al final, bueno, va a ser mi tercera maratón y ahora estoy aquí y con muchas ganas, la verdad. Veo que es una carrera que me gusta mucho, es muy rápida, todo lo que puedes correr y creo que puede ser una buena carrera. Este es Mont Blanc, ¿no? Everyone says the start is fast and flat, but this is the Golden Trail. Most runners will be walking by now. This is not fast and flat. With the new race track, the trails that bring you to Col de Posette is really runnable. Just the last part is a little bit more technical. When we will get to the top, I think that uh, the leaders will be in a group, just in case someone will start really fast and is able to keep on a higher pace, even in the uphill, will be alone. I think people who are feeling overconfident are going to go really fast, because you can go fast. Um, and then I think other people might mediate themselves a little bit. But the big challenge are the switchbacks, because there's so many. So do you slow down and make the turn and risk crashing out? I'm feeling good. I'm really excited. Uh, coming back to the Golden Trail, it kind of feels like a really big family, especially from last year. Happy birthday to you! So yeah, I was a little nervous before I got here, but now that I'm here, it feels uh, just like it was last year. OK, 
Qu'est-ce que ça te fait d'être le coureur le plus populaire ici pour cet événement Ça c'est parce qu'il n'y a pas François Den. Do you know this guy? Who this guy is? I don't know. I don't have a clue. <rire> Je fais la course avec vous. Do you know this guy? I don't know. Sorry. Can you just say yes? Yes. Yes. Do you know who this man, this young man here is? No. Inconnu. Ce baronnier, inconnu. <rire> Bien sûr que je le connais ah bah, Thibaut Baronien, oui. <rire> Tim Salomon. Ah. One, two, three. Ah. Est-ce que tu connais Thibaut Baronien, oui, je connais. Ah. Pair of you with the petite camionnette Allez. Yeah. Ah, ah, Allez. Cool. <rire> voilà, merci. merci. Ça fait oui. plaisir. Oh, Sunday. I hope. <rire> Thank you. You're popular Yes Ok, now okay. I like I you. <rire> After his second place in Zagama, Davide Magnini is returning probably as the favourite. He's won here in 2019 and knows the course well, but there's going to be some stiff competition from Jonathan Alban. He won the OCC, the 56k version of the UTMB here last year with exactly the same finish and he's on great form. But there's so many people in the men's who can really challenge. Petro Mamu, former winner of Sierras that now will be here. And Robert Matiango, who came fifth in Zagama, will be racing again. This is a faster course for him, and he's beginning to understand how to race well in trail. The other three people who I think can do well here are El Hussein, Thibaut, and Remy. They're all incredibly good climbers, but whether they're going to be fast enough on the downhill will be their challenge. The women's last year's second place at Mont Blanc, Annie Sabri, is returning for her first golden trail of the season. She probably starts as the slight favourite and as the faster roadrunner will be leading out the race. Also back from Zagama in third place is Sara Alonso and she'll be racing again her great rival, Danny Marino. They are two apiece and when you include Anaïs, none of them have won a golden trail race before. Runners like Fabiola Conti also return, and Shayla Aviles is also here, former winner of the Sky Running World Championship Series, to see if she could get on the podium for the first time in a while. Flinch on. to be in the room with Sarah. Exciting. You never know what's going to happen. Ready. We're at the start, 15 minutes to go. As you can see, the crowds are already gathering because 2,000 people are running this course today. The sun is up, the heat is going to be coming out, and this is a four-hour race. So it looks quite cool now, but by the last two hours, they're going to be tiring, and it is going to get hot.
in Argentière at the moment. This is the end of the flatter, faster part that starts the race. Behind us starts the up. The front peloton was Robert, Petro, Juan Carlos y John. Not so far behind was the second part of the head peloton with Remy, Anthony and Theo. The first woman we saw coming in was Anaïs. She was running on her own, but Sara Alonso was not too far behind. Then came a small group with, amongst others. So let's see, because things might change a lot after this massive uphill. It's 13 kilometers and it climbs 700 meters but there are some small downhills as well. So you do get this kind of like backwards and forwards a little bit, but I just ended up like in between uh, the Kenyan guys and the favorites of the race, like Remy and Davida. For the first 10 kilometers, yes, I wanted to try not to get too much of Sarah. I thought she would go faster and faster. Et j'étais bien, euh, musculairement, aussi euh, euh, sur la respiration. Et, euh, et je prenais vraiment du plaisir euh, d'avoir un peu de combativité et, euh, et de vraiment de me bagarrer avec Sarah et avec, euh, avec les quelques filles qu'il y avait derrière euh, sur la première montée. For the first part, actually, Danny and I were racing together, which was really cool. I was just hoping to kind of jump in on her, her strategy. I wasn't able to keep on running in the climb and I was really disappointed because that was where I wanted to do my move but I couldn't run, I had to walk. We start uh, in Le Tour the, the long climb and I was feeling really, really good so I, I decided to catch up with the, with the Kenyans so I catch, we catch up with them and then I, I decided to, to go in front and to, to make my race. Looks like Petro Mamu, uh, Remy Bonet, and exactly. uh, Juan Carlos Carrera have pulled a little bit ahead in that climb. Just before we got to the top, like I was feeling really under control. I was trying to like walk as much as I could just to like keep my heart rate down. And I knew that I needed to be on, like if I wanted to be in contention for this race, I needed to be on those women because I don't get to train on technical downhills really where I live. And so I, I knew that like that was going to be somewhere where I was going to lose people and I was okay with that. Bueno, yo creo que la bajada, en la prensa lo dije, que iba a ser donde iba a atacar. Y ahí he bajado, he pasado a Naís y ya la carrera estaba sola, pero un agobio todo el rato, no sé, ir primero es un agobio, todo el rato piensas que viene alguien. We're here at the second aid station at the bottom of Col de Passet. Last year, this is where everything changed. The downhill shuffled the pack before Steen and Davide pulled away on the up. We're expecting the same this year, except John Album is in the front pack and he is the fastest descender from the leaders. So we will see at this point whether he's in control of this race and whether Davide, Remy and Thibaut can hold on. Come on, guys! Come on, people! Come on! So we came down to Valocine and we're actually all together, surprisingly enough for me. Um, I grab a couple of gels and my bottle, start heading out, legs are feeling awful. Like uh, I, I was expecting for them to feel better after that downhill, but actually like the calves were tightening up, twinges, like almost cramped. 
a little bit hollow, you know, exactly what you don't want halfway through a mountain marathon type race. In the downhill to Valor scene, I couldn't run smoothly and I arrived at the end of the downhill with all my legs completely destroyed. And so when I was there, I also thought to, to give up, to drop off the race because I still have some problem in the stomach, the legs were knocked out, but after something changed. The women's is super close. Sarah has taken the lead slightly. She looks strong with Anise behind. But the surprise is that Danny has not found her stride. Caitlin is up there and Fabiola still is hanging on. Not looking as bad as I thought. So when I got to Valor scene, uh, I switched my mindset to start hunting down people, uh, start trying to catch them. I was feeling quite good uh, until the top and then I go in the downhill and I start to, to feel a bit the stomach a bit strange and uh, it was the start of the, of the nightmare. I start vomiting and uh, throwing uh, everywhere like five or six times in the downhill. And then at the bottom I was not feeling so great and I, I continue on, until uh, Col de Monte and I start to, to see a bit uh, not clear and I, I decide to drop because uh, yeah, for me health is uh, the most important and uh, I know that uh, there is still many races to, to go, so it was a good decision, I think. We just arrived at La Flejar. This is the last aid station before the end of the race. We're eight kilometers away from downtown Chamonix. But in these kilometers, there's a bit of up and down and then a massive downhill. We're just waiting for the first man to arrive. So we're going to see what shifted since last time. It is John Alban that is leading the race at this point. He's a good three minutes in front of Elusin, who picked up the pace since last time we saw them. Elusin is just in front of Davide, maybe one minute between the two of them. And then we have a small group that's closer together with Thibaut, Rui, Robert and Petal. I checked the course uh, before the race. My strategy was to uh, keep my pace. I could push, but so many cramps. <laughs> It's so tough. As for the women, Sarah is leading with about four minutes, which is incredible, but she had a quick hiccup at the aid station. She lost her hat when she got water on her head. Seemed that it panicked her a little bit, but she quickly grabbed it and kept on running with the determination we know she has. I was a little bit worried about the climb going up into La Flugere because that's the biggie. That's where you can kind of make or break the race, I think, and I had really wanted to feel strong there. Um, but I was, I was quite surprised with how I was feeling. 
and I kind of just power walked my way up there and I passed Anais along the way. The group of runners that came after was led by Caitlin, followed by Anais and Dani. These three women, I'm telling you, we better keep an eye on from here until the end of the race because the battle is going to be fierce. I arrived in La Flegere that I had, uh, um, I was third, just one minute behind uh, Elusine, who was second. But I said, here's the podium and the other guy behind me are coming also really strong. So go full gas in the downhill and don't look uh, back and that worked. Allez mon gars, je t'accroche. I actually would normally push really hard, no matter what, but I was trying to be clever. I got told I had a four minute gap, and that's like, that's a big gap. That's easily ruined by breaking an ankle or doing something stupid, so I tried to hold back a little bit, but to be honest, I didn't want to run that much faster, especially like the calves, especially now were really like cramping. Um, I had a little fall, like I came down to this bend and there's four guys standing there with a bike and they're gonna film me. But that split second I looked up, saw them, then I was just suddenly sliding on my front down towards them. So from that point, I thought I have to concentrate, like I have to finish this. When I passed on AE, it was interesting in the sense that I was feeling really good, but she also looked equally good. And we actually went back and forth maybe three or four times and then finally I committed and started going on the downhill and really hammering, but it's a very long downhill and uh, I know she's a very fluid descender. It always feels absolutely amazing to run through Chamonix with crowds lining the street, everyone like screaming and shouting it is an amazing feeling. Started the season with a win. Where can we see you next? Um, I think actually Sierra Nal is planned to be next, and it's quite a long time before Sierra Nal. So we have a good training period. It's a really good feeling. I'm really satisfied and really happy for this race because I felt really bad in the beginning and I've never thought to finish on the podium so and you're now leading the golden trail yeah it's a really good news Después de quedar tercero en cego, y que no estaba ni en K Maude, la gente tenía expectativas altas, pero el año pasado Anaís me había ganado todas las carreras por más de 10 minutos, entonces, bueno, me, me veían como favorita, pero yo decía, bueno, me, que Anaís corre, o sea, y que a Dani Moreno el año pasado también estaba súper fuerte en todas las carreras y, y muy contenta de haber ganado. What's happened? Here in the 38 kilometers, I fall to the floor, and my beep, my beep, fall to the floor. I was like, oh, my beep! And, but not the only for the, for the life, for being more a traffic video. What a race, it just didn't stop changing from start to finish. In the men's, John attacked early, and it worked. 
He's won his first Golden Trail with a huge lead, but Davide held back, Rui held back, and for both of them, they came through the ranks. Davide gets his second of the season, his second race, he's now leading the competition. Rui came third, having been in 15th. El Hussein held on for fourth, and Thibaut showed his maturity once again to get fifth. In the women, Sara had the confidence, Sara had the strength. She broke from the top of Col de Passet and never looked back. Anais led out strong but couldn't quite hold on. Eventually, Caitlin came through and then Danny came through with a huge bat at the finish. Caitlin in second, great confidence boost for her. Danny, her first race of the season in third. Anais holds on for fourth. And in fifth, Marcella came through the ranks to finish off our top five. That's been our Mont Blanc Marathon. We'll be back in August at Saranda Ford in Norway for a new race in the series. I've been bad boy running. Keep on running. Happy trails.